Welcome to the Inner West Library's Youth Program. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Gadigal and the Wangal people of the Eora Nation, and to pay my deepest respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and to any First Australians watching today. Today we have an excellent workshop from Will Kostakis, one of our Inner West local writing legends, and he's going to share some techniques with you. We've got all of Will's books in our libraries, Reserve one today. Enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Will Kostakis, the author of the young adult novels, The First Third, The Sidekicks and The Monuments Duology. And it is my absolute pleasure to be with you today, at least virtually, to tell you all I know about creative writing in bite-sized little pieces. And before we begin today, I thought I would introduce you to one of my books. This is Monuments, it was released in 2019 and basically growing up I was a really huge fan of the fantasy genre and my mind would wander constantly. I would be on a train to school in Stanmore and I would press my head you know, against the glass of a Sydney train and I would imagine as the sort of city scrolled past, I would imagine this massive epic fantasy adventure playing out across its skyline. But the thing is, I never really saw my city reflected in the books that I read and I very rarely saw my experiences reflected in the books that I read as a young gay Greek kid. And so as I got older, I wanted to fill in that absence and write that story for myself. So I ended up with Monuments, which is basically Legend of Zelda set in Sydney now. You've got three kids, Connor, Sally and Lockie, skipping school to basically find the ancient gods that are buried under different Sydney high schools. And so I'll read for you a little bit from the beginning. Chapter one. This is my first friend divorce, so forgive me if I'm doing it wrong. It's probably, definitely, against the rules to text, but it's Monday the 30th of March, Ollie's 16th birthday. I can't ignore that. I won't. We met when the glue we used at school was edible. We have history. Sure, part of that history is him being very clear about not wanting to hang out anymore, but ignoring that little blemish. He thinks I'm boring. I only ever do what adults tell me to. He's wrong. I'm messaging him to meet me on the Founders Block rooftop in seven minutes. I'm not allowed to let anyone else up there. I'm breaking a school rule for him. That's not boring. He'll see that. I checked the text once for typos before sending it. I set down my phone and exhale. The cafeteria is buzzing. It always buzzes when pancakes are the breakfast special. I looked to my plate, my overflowing plate. I told Ollie to meet me in seven minutes. I should have given myself more time. Now today, what I really wanted to talk about was seeking inspiration. And now usually I would be like, hey, step out into the world. You know, you'll find inspiration absolutely everywhere. All you have to do is look. But you know, given the hellscape that is 2020, can't really do that so much. So I thought, where else can we find inspiration? And one of the places I often find inspiration is in the books that I read, in the movies that I watch, in all the media that I consume. And so what I thought I would do today is I thought I would pick up a book and I would show you the ways that you can draw inspiration from it. Now, the first thing I tell absolutely anyone who wants to be a writer or to, who wants to improve their writing is you have to get reading. Yeah? And now I don't mean you have to go, you know, deep dive into the canon of amazing literature, right? Not that I think that all literature isn't amazing, but you know, what we're told at school or what we're told by the media is a good book isn't always the book that will awaken something in you that, you know, will inspire you. And it isn't always, you know, the one book that will make you a good writer. So what I recommend you do is pick up a book that you are drawn to. And if you're not drawn to a book and you find difficulty getting into books, that's when librarians come in. Tell them what your interests are, the video games that you like, the movies you like watching, and they will be able to find a book that suits your interests. And if not, they'll be able to get it in for you. And so what you should be doing is you should be finding 10 to 15 minutes a day just to read. 
Yeah, and you know, for all the teenagers out there, the big advice that I give you, and it's the advice I give myself, is plug in your phone at night on the other side of your bedroom and go to bed with a book. You will fall asleep much faster and you'll get more reading in than you really expect. And so reading without realizing it, it will improve the quality of your writing. But let's say you're not thinking about improving the quality of your writing, you're just thinking about, okay, how do I use a book to get inspired? There are a couple of things that we can do. The most fun thing that I love doing is I love going up to a bookshelf, either in a library or in my house, and plucking out three random books, um, different genres, different audience, and I open them to a random page. So I'll sit there and I'll decide, okay, page 124. I'll open it up, page 124. Wow, I'm really bad at finding pages. <laughs> okay, and I've seen there's about 20 lines, 15, 20 lines on that page. I'll pluck a number at random, you know, let's say 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, that is going to be my story starter. But look, I'm an author, so a notepad is never far away. So what I will do is I will take down that first line, which is, there were people dressed as elves and trolls speaking in riddles and everything. So, now, your first instinct will be, that is a terrible first line, there is no way that I'm going to be able to write something after that. And you know what? Tough luck because you will. <laughs> and I always find that as a human being, whenever I resist something intensely, that's usually my defense mechanism or it's my, it's certainly doubting myself that I can do something. But set yourself that challenge and have a go and write for about five minutes. So look, doesn't really work for me in this instance because I know what the next line is because I wrote it. Um, but I would write something more. So there were people dressed as elves and trolls speaking in riddle and everything. Um, it was my younger brother's fifth birthday party. And I was seven seconds away from leaping over the fence and never returning again. Now, when you're doing an exercise like this, you've got to be mindful of the voice. So how is the story told? Is it written in first person? Is it written in second person? That would be a bit creepy. Is it written in third person? So if you don't know the difference between those, First person is I did something. Second person is you did something. Third person is he did something. So you wanna make sure that that is consistent when you continue on from somebody's story. And now look, you've done that right for about five minutes. If you really, really, really wanna throw yourself a curved ball or you find that the story has run out of energy, pluck up a different book. I'll pluck up the same one. Pick another number, let's say 24 and there's about 30 lines on that page, let's say 27. It's somebody saying, before I do anything, I'd really like to know your name, okay? And so I would jot that down and try to find a way to connect the story that I'd written to that line of dialogue. So how does it work? My brain is already coming up with what if questions, like what if my character escapes this birthday party goes on a mini adventure. It doesn't have to be a fantasy adventure. So goes off on an adventure, finds somebody, and then, you know, he's asked the name, yeah? And that's a really small way. The reason why I love this exercise is that it fires up that creative problem-solving part of your brain. A lot of creative writing is about usually coming up against a brick wall and finding a way to write the sledgehammer to work through it. And now, doing this, it is actually firing up those parts of your brain 
that allow you to deal with these sort of curveballs that you're thrown. Yeah? And if you're a high school student, you're often thrown these curveballs, especially when you get story stimuluses in exams. And so building up this practice from when you were younger is really, really great because you will come to actually really enjoy the challenge. So when you get those challenges in you know, the later years of high school, possibly in the HSC, not, you're not stunned by them, but you relish it, yeah? Okay, so that's just using different stories as story starters. And that's something that you can do to sort of warm up. Now, what else can we do? How else can we seek inspiration from the books that we read? Now, I probably don't need to tell you about fan fiction, but if I do, here goes. Basically, fan fiction is wonderful and thriving online, and it's where you can take characters that exist in other people's works and you can explore different possibilities. You know, you can send them on different journeys. You can explore different corners of their lives. You can sit there and you can ask yourself, hey, what if a person of color was a leading character in Harry Potter and work that into it? Think about, okay, you know, not to draw on Harry Potter too much. You know, think about what the Hunger Games would be like set in Sydney in 2040. How would that sort of work? And so, what I want you to do is look at pieces of books that you like, find gaps in characters' journeys and think, okay, how can I fill that in in a really creative way? Yep. Or if I like one character from one book, what if they met a different character from another book? What if there's romance? There are lots of different things that you can do with other people's work. And look, we can go into copyright. <laughs> like, I'm not saying, you know, go and publish it. I am saying, go out there, have fun, you know, mixing different people's ideas together. Look, it is a big way that stories are being composed and they're being imagined. You know, Twilight started off as Harry Potter fan fiction and I think, yes, pretty sure. <laughs> Answer angrily in the comments if I've gotten that wrong. And then Fifty Shades of Grey started as Twilight fan fiction. And so you can see this thread that runs through composition and so many authors nowadays got their start in fan fiction. I wish I did, but um, thinking back on it, I, one, of my, one of my favorite TV shows growing up was Friends. And if I look back at all the stories I wrote in high school, it was about a group of six friends in high school. Now, I wrote poetry for fun. I didn't have six friends, <laughs> but... <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, sad. Um, but you could see where I was drawing inspiration from. And that's, it's a wonderful way to learn the craft and to, somebody else has done a lot of the world building hard work for you. And you get to jump in there and you get to experiment and you get to have fun with their world. So, you know, don't be afraid to have a go at that and then, you know, do what other authors do, do control F, replace and then hey you have an original piece of writing um that's something that you can do something else that you can do that i find really really fascinating and there's an offshoot of fan fiction but it's sort of what english teachers get us to do when we're writing and they wouldn't let us call it fan fiction but it really is look at a book that you really love and sit there and go that character in the background they disappear for about three chapters what were they doing instead? And so what you do is find that part of a book that hasn't been explored and then explore it yourself. So that's something that you can do when you're writing. You can sit there and go, okay, this side character in a novel, and usually side characters are more interesting than the main characters. That's something that I'm quite guilty of in my books, especially something like the first third where I think Styx or Lucas is far more fascinating than the main character. But, and that was something I toyed with when I was writing the book, but sit there and go, okay, what if Styx was the main character of the first third? What is his journey? How would he look at the events of this book? And there are so many really wonderful, fascinating stories that subvert what our expectation is of the main character and looks at these sort of side characters and tells us their stories. Like one of the most fascinating versions of this is uh, Tom Stoppard's play, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, which is set within Hamlet. 
And so Hamlet is there, if you haven't read it, uh, he's just sort of running around going, oh, to be or not to be, do I kill my uncle or not? Um, and so he's sort of running around having a teenage angst meltdown. And there are these two characters called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and they die. But they die in a really anticlimactic way. Someone just walks onto the stage and just goes, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Which, you know, that's like Shakespeare Ride in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> um, but you've got that sort of, their story wasn't really fleshed out. And so what Tom Stoppard did was he wrote a play, much like Hamlet was about procrastination, theirs was about procrastination as well. And we looked at what happened to them when they were off stage, but they're also very aware that they are trapped within a play. And that's a text that is so highly regarded by people. I studied it in high school, yeah? So when people talk about fan fiction, don't feel like that that is a lesser form of writing because you can find meaning in somebody else's text. If you're really worried about copyright, great. Go back hundreds of years where copyright has expired, find a text and go, okay, what's a character I can write about from this text? What's a way that I can remix this text? You know, is there a way I can, you know, representation of women and queer representation in texts? kind of appalling, like when we go back 50, 100, 200 years, go back and sit there and go, okay, how can I modernize this text? How can I make it more relatable to people my age now? Is there a way that I can transform or appropriate this text? Can I set, you know, a story like, let's say Catch-22, which is set during a war, how can I set that at a school, yeah? What's a way that I can transform these older stories? And the thing is the possibilities are endless. And I don't know about you, but when I look at a blank page, I am absolutely overwhelmed by the possibilities of what I can write. But if you actually build a border around that page and say, look, I'm just gonna use this one text and I'm going to remix it in a particular way, more often than not, you can come up with something really, really, really special. And from those restrictions that you give yourself, um, creativity happens. So best of luck. Uh, please sound off in the comments if you have had a go at this and sort of picked a book either from your library or from your bookshelf. Let us know how it goes. Happy writing.